Welcome to today's CHTV. Today we'll cover a summer bucket list check-in, goals from Dr. Ferris, and construction from around the school. And it's time to get hyped for Carmel Sports. But first, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Good morning, Greyhounds, and welcome to a new year of CHTV News. We're your new news anchors for this semester. I'm Jonathan Aiken. And I'm Alina Kaplan. We'll bring you the latest in news, sports, weather, and entertainment every gold day during SSRT. Like many other areas at CHS, our control room and studio are under construction. As for our shows, they will premiere on YouTube. Dates are listed on the screen. And with that, let's get to the news, Carmel. As Jonathan said, parts of our school are improving, and that means construction. News reporter Ashlyn Waters caught up with the assistant principal, Steele, to get an update. Yes, I'll do my best. We have a lot of uh, exciting projects going on right now. Um, I'll start with the performing arts project. We have uh, wall protection going on. Uh, so you may have noticed the, the tile going up. That is a, a project that we're trying to do during off hours. So um, that will be going on through the months of September uh, uh, and, and finishing October, hopefully. Um, from there, we have the Polytech edition uh, for our engineering technology uh, department. And that is in two phases. We have the interior renovation and the exterior edition. Um, the exterior edition is set to uh, conclude about this time next year. Uh, hopefully for the uh, start of school, but the uh, construction documents have it going out to about October. Uh, the interior renovation started over this past summer, um, and we will finish it next summer while school is out. Uh, the radio TV edition is, is ongoing. Uh, it's currently uh, coming to an end. We are finishing construction the next couple weeks, uh, the next two weeks, and we have furniture being delivered on August 3rd. 30th, I believe, off the top of my head. Uh, from there, we have the natatorium and the door 21 entrance. Uh, we have made a lot of progress there the last uh, month and a half. Um, door 21 is looking to open uh, when we come back from Labor Day break. Um, and then the natatorium currently is set to be finished on November 1st. Um, the South Support Building um, is almost complete. Uh, we actually look to get uh, a certi uh, certification of occupancy in the Greyhound Activity Center. The Greyhound Activity Center, uh, we are beginning this week the turf installation, and uh, that is set for completion in uh, at the end of September. Tired of walking up the trail? A new raffle is taking place at the end of each semester. If you have perfect attendance, your name will be entered, and you could win AirPods, a parking pass, and more. Speaking of attendance, coming up for everyone is a day off. Labor Day is just around the corner, Greyhounds, and that means no school on September 2nd, so get hyped for your three-day weekend. The holiday celebrates the social and economic contributions of the American workers. If you plan to spend your time off by taking a weekend getaway, be aware that the roads will be backed up Thursday and Friday afternoon. The best way to avoid this traffic is to drive at night or early morning. If you're not heading out of town, some local activities over Labor Day weekend include the Pitbull concert at Ruoff on Sunday night, the Sunflower Festival at Stucky Farms, and the Women's Running Festival on Saturday at the Courthouse Gazebo. Let's hope to see some good weather during all these events. Speaking of good weather, last May we asked students and teachers what was on their summer bucket list. Let's find out if they completed it before we head over to our weather forecast with Sophie and Lauren. <laughs> I did go to a beach, I went to Destin, Florida, and got stuck by jellyfish four times in the ocean. I would like to read a book a week. I said I was going to read a book a week, but I managed about half of that. I read five books this summer. One thing on my summer bucket list would probably be, I want to go to King's Island. I did end up going to King's Island. I went with some of my friends from choir, and my favorite ride was probably the Banshee.
my greyhounds? Did you miss us? Because we missed you. Good morning, greyhounds, and happy Friday. I'm Lauren Wolfengel. And I'm Sophie Parker. And we're back with your first CHTV weather update of the year. We hope you survived this blazing hot week. Now let's get into this weekend's weather. Today, walking down the trail, it's going to be 85 degrees and cloudy. And if you're showing up to the football game this evening at Westfield, it's going to be around 80 degrees and there's a slight chance of rain. Over the weekend, you're looking at sunny conditions with lows in the 60s and highs in the 80s. And the UV index is going to be 8, so make sure you wear your sunscreen. That's all we have for you today. We hope you have a freaky Friday. Now let's send it back to the studio. Thank you for that update, Sophie and Lauren. I'm sure glad it's going to be nice for the long weekend. Many of you might plan to read a great book over the holiday. Since May of last year, a new state bill has allowed parents and community members to request books that they deem harmful and obscene to be removed. CHS student Allie Swearinger assembled a group of her peers and spoke at the Monday, August 26th school board meeting. Let's hear from Allie and then head over to sports with Eli. Hi, I'm Mahitha Kanjadi. I'm a Carmel High School junior, and today I was here to represent Allie Swearington, her entire dedication to stopping the censorship of books within the Carmel Clay Schools, and I spoke to the school board about it, and I gave a speech basically talking about opposition to this new censorship bill that was trying to be passed. CHGB tried finding someone with an opposing viewpoint at the meeting, but we had no luck. Thank you for that great information on book banning, Isaiah. Welcome, Greyhounds. I'm Eli Penquite, one of your sports anchors for this year. Carmel Boys Soccer has started strong, winning their first few games and will play Burbuff on Monday, September 3rd, starting at 7. Girls Soccer has had a rocky start after losing their first game to Hamilton Southeastern 3-1. They will play Fishers here at Murray Stadium at 10.45 tomorrow morning. Show up to support the Lady Hounds. Carmel Football won their first game against Homestead 34-10. The defense showed up, getting two turnovers, including an interception by True Cannon that he returned 30 yards for a touchdown. The Greyhounds offense started slow with only three points in the first quarter, but ended the night with three offensive touchdowns. Quarterback Anthony Colner had two passing touchdowns, but suffered an injury in the fourth quarter. The Greyhounds will play at Westfield tonight, starting at 7 p.m. This matchup could likely be a sectional preview as they have faced each other in the first round of the IHSAA tournament the last two years. We know Carmel sports are dominant, but it never hurts to show it. Let's go to a hype video created by Courier Paradise and Dylan DeLise, and then over to Carter Hadley for more sports. Carmel Athletics is the pursuit of excellence. It's looking for daily opportunities to work together, to work hard, improve your fundamentals, work as a team, compete together, prepare together, so that when you're ready to go out for a contest, you know that you've done your part to prepare, get ready to do your best. Another one of your CHTV sports anchors for this year. In front, the noon auditorium. 
Thanks to Coyer and Dylan for that awesome package showcasing CHS dominance not just across the state, but the world. This summer, current Carmel swimmer Alex Shackle qualified and medaled at the Olympic Games in Paris. Carmel coach Chris Plum was also named to the Olympic team coaching staff when three Carmel swimmers made the team. Shackle won silver in the 4x100 medley relay as she swam the prelims like a butterfly and gold in the 4x200 free relay, which she anchored in the prelim session. Make sure you tune into our next show when CHCB sports director Addie Modral will sit down with Alex. Other Carmel swimmers making the team were Aaron Shackle, who placed 8th in the 400 meter free, and Drew Kibler, who was a part of the silver medal squad in the 4x200 meter free relay. Shackle graduated Carmel in 2023 and Kibler in 2018. That's all I have for now. Now let's send to the entertainment Sophie and Sophia. Thanks, Carter. What's up, Carmel? I'm Sophie Lewis. And I'm Sophia Selzo here with your first entertainment update of the year. I don't know about you, Sophia, but I had a pretty busy summer. Did you do anything fun? I also had a pretty packed summer, but I did get the chance to see some Indie Fever games. Over the past few months, Indie Fever has gained a lot of traction, especially with their new addition of Caitlin Clark, who has become an inspiration for women athletes all over the country. This week, we celebrated Women's History Month and interviewed Indie Fever players Victoria Saxton, Aliyah Boston, and Lexi Holt. Sophia asked Lexi her advice for transitioning freshmen or seniors in high school. Here's what she said. Uh, I think in any big transition, it's super important who you surround yourself with. Um, so finding you know, that village, whether that's your family, whether that's your friends from high school, or finding a really good community in the college that you go to. But I think the people you surround yourself, what they're saying to you really has an impact. And Finding the people that you can believe in, people that trust you, people that love you, I think that sets you up for success. Thanks for that, Sophia. If you'll notice, we're not in our studio for our show today. We're standing in the Freshman Center to welcome the class of 2029. We got a chance to interview a freshman to see how their transition from middle school to CHS is going. Let's see what they had to say. Um, I think it's been pretty easy. It's definitely a challenge to navigate the building because it's so big but I think I'm getting used to it and it's becoming easier by the day. And now we've saved the best for last. We got a chance to interview Dr. Ferris on his goals for this upcoming school year at CHS. So some of our goals this year I will tell you from an admin perspective and our team um, has been you know we have have had some change on our team this year so we have two uh, technically three administrators that have left our team this year. And so we've added two new people. And one thing that we have talked a lot about is just being collaborative and working together and really kind of being a servant leader uh, to our staff members and always being available and being able to do that. And so for us, a lot of, uh, you know, kind of a goal this year is really for our team to gel and work together and, and look forward to a great year. We're off to a great start. Uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, having new people on our team to hear new voices uh, and just reflective and always trying to grow uh, in our leadership and grow in our service to our staff and students. For our students, I think it's always this kind of the same message. And, you know, I start with uh, this year, I talked to all of our students about the idea of, of taking pride in who you are and representing your school and representing your name and being that person that, you know, makes good choices and knowing that you are the person responsible for everything that you do. And then the other word that I love to talk about is opportunity or being connected. You know, with such a large high school, it's a great um, kind of a world of opportunities out there. And we need our students to take uh, great advantage of that. And we see that on a day-to-day -day basis. And we encourage each and every one of our students to get involved, find that opportunity that you can connect with and, and be great at whatever you do. So those are our goals for our students and staff this year. Well, that's all we have for your entertainment news today, Greyhounds. Now let's send it back to the host desk. Thank you to Dr. Ferris for taking the time to sit down with us. That's all we have for your morning announcements, Greyhounds. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel at CHTV Carmel Television and follow our Instagram at Carmel TV. This has been Alina Kaplan. And I've been Jonathan Aiken. Have, have a, a great, great Friday, Greyhounds. Greyhounds.